tell somebody else about it because we know it really work in their lives. <laughs> you know, I, well, I can't wait to tell my, my brother about this. He should have been at church. He, he should have really heard that message. But really, when you in this arc of growth, the first person you're going to apply that word to is you. You know, in every message I ever teach you all, guess who, guess, guess who the first partaker of the message is? It's me. It's me. You may be out there going, ooh, ouch, past, out, that hurt, past, that hurt. Guess what? I already got my lump, so I'm glad to share them with you, too. <laughs> Seriously. I can't teach it. Do you, do you know that scripture? I'm trying to remember where it is. But it, it basically says that uh, every farmer, when he harvests his crop, is the first partaker of his, of his harvest. See, before he goes and sells it at the market, he eats the corn first for himself. If it got some worms in it or whatever, you're like, whoa, okay, I can't sell this. Is no, this is no good. So every preacher has to partake first of his teaching. And guess what? When you're hearing the word of God, you have to apply, in, in, in this investment of the plan, you have to apply the word to yourself, really, before you can go on and try to apply it to somebody else's life. I'm glad I got at least one amen. That was a little quiet there for a minute. All right, listen, I know it's a sober realization, but this is good. And here's the thing about it. It's important. That's why it's called self-control. Temperance is called self-control. Because the first place you have to apply this knowledge, the first investment of this knowledge has to be in you. And guess what part of you you have to apply it to first? The lowest part of you. And you know what that is? Your body. The lowest part of us is our flesh, is our body. And this word, you got to apply this thing to your flesh first and foremost. So, let's look at this. Romans chapter 7. I want to show you why it's so important to apply it to uh, the flesh. And that's because in Romans 7, it says, verse 14, Paul says, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am mortal, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for I don't do what I would like to do, but instead I do what I hate to do. And then listen to what he says. He says, I know, verse 18, he says, I know that good does not live in me. That is in my human nature, or translation, flesh. For even though the desire to do good is in me, I'm not able to do it. So what he's saying is, or in the King James it says, uh, in my flesh, here's how the King James says, Romans 7, 18, in my flesh dwells what? No good thing. Or another way of saying it is, the only thing that dwells in my flesh or my human nature is sin. Now we've been saved, which literally means we've been made alive unto God. Our spirit, man, is alive unto God. But the truth is, we still have an old nature. We still have a human nature. We still have a flesh. And in our flesh dwells no good thing. So the first place we have to attack is that flesh. Because that flesh, to be honest with you, has been having its way a long time. In fact, you know, this fast that we're on really demonstrates the flesh. Because it's only when... See, as long as you give in the flesh what the flesh wants... You don't, you don't feel any struggle. As soon as you tell the flesh, it's, you know, it, as soon as you tell, it's kind of like your children. It's kind of like your children. As long as, as long as you're doing whatever your children like to do, there's no tension. But as soon as you tell them, you can turn that TV off. Y'all got to go to bed. Now we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. You know, as soon as you tell them, no, y'all can't, no, you can't go to the movies this weekend. Now, we, before that, you were, mom, you were the greatest mom and dad in the whole world, see? You know, I'm, I'm down, did I just come down your street, brother? <laughs> I, just, I just made a left turn down, down Fern Rock. Huh? Okay, praise the Lord. But as long as, you, as long as you're doing what the flesh wants you to do, somebody say, no problem. no problem. But as soon as you say, we can't have bread. Houston, we got a problem. It's a, it's a problem up in here. Wait, 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 say what? No bread. Well, okay, for a day or two, maybe we can, I can roll. 21 days? No bread? For 21 days? Bread? I like me some bread. What you talking about? What you talking about, witness? What you talking about? No bread. No eating after seven for 21 days? See, mm. 
I don't know how many of y'all do follow this fast, but if you follow this flag fast like I'm following it, somebody's revolting up inside of you. Somebody's saying, well, hold up now. Oh, wait, hey, hey, wait a minute. You know, we, hey, I'd like to, can I appeal to a higher court? Somebody's trying to, you know, so there's, little, there's a little tension going on. Somebody's trying to rise up in the up in here. Flesh trying to rise up. Somebody say, keep him under. Listen, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, Look at that. Galatians chapter 5. It says, verse 16. What I say is this, Paul says, let the Spirit direct your lives and you will not satisfy the desires of the flesh or the human nature. Now here's the key, verse 17. For what our human nature or our flesh wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants. And what the Spirit wants is opposed to what the flesh or the human nature wants. These two are enemies. And this means that you cannot do what you want to do. Right. See, this thing is a fight. It's a fight going on on the inside. And as soon as you make a decision, remember I said the purpose was the goal, right? As soon as you say, I'm going to live holy. The flesh said, what you talking about? You ain't lived holy for 35 years. What you talking about? You going to live holy. Man, we don't even know how to spell holy. What you like, Holy? We know about that other stuff. You, you know. The drinking and the smoking and the sex, and we know that. But you trying to, no, uh-uh, that doesn't feel right. But you have to tell that, that dude, no. So point number one is, in order to dominate the flesh, in order to dominate the flesh, you must be filled with the Spirit. I said that, didn't I, earlier? In order to dominate the flesh, you must be filled with the Spirit. And I think this is a really important point, because it goes back to our definition of temperance. It's, what's the definition? It's self-control under or by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. So temperance without power is a, is a you know, is a, is a long fight with a short stick. Right? Temperance without power is, is, is you know, what they say, you bring in a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> you gonna lose. You can't make, you can't make it. But, but every time. So in order to dominate the flesh, you must be filled with the Spirit. To dominate means to control. It means to rule over. It means to have authority over. And so letter A says, being filled with the Spirit will give you supernatural power. There it is. Being filled with the Spirit will give you supernatural power. You, you all ever, like I said, when I talk about a night to a gunfight, Here's another example. You ever watch these shows on TV and <laughs> the, the police be talking about, halt, it's the police. And they're there with the little, you know, uh, handgun, even if it's a 9 millimeter. And the cops always have, you know, <laughs> they always have some semi-automatic, I mean, automatic stuff. They all have all these machine guns. Up, and they say, stop, it's the police. Then, <laughs> the cops just running and everything. They're out gun. No, the bad guys have yeah, the, the that's what I'm saying. The, oh, did I say it wrong? The bad guys have all these automatic weapons, and the cops are hitting the floor, and they're outgunned. I'm saying that's an example of what happens when you don't have power. But when you do have power, you can bring out your automatics and say, hey, you know what? I can match what you got, you know, right on back. So that ace is being filled with the Spirit will give you supernatural power. In other words, we can't, we can't match this power of the flesh in our own power, we need supernatural power. Letter B says being filled with the Spirit will give you supernatural success. There it is. So when you have this supernatural power, you can, you can, you can dominate. You can overcome some things that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to handle. I, I really, truly believe that the success that I am experiencing, that I believe a lot of you are experiencing during this time of the fast, is because you're filled with the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. The funny thing about is that being filled with the Spirit is a really, really, really weird thing. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because it's not something that you can just, it's all by faith. It's like when you do it and when you pray in the Spirit, Everything doesn't just happen all at once. But later you look back at your day and you see that was so I'm, that happened because I'm filled. I, I'm, I'm under the anointing. I know that this doesn't usually happen or whatever. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very, it's subtle. 
but it's powerful and it gives you supernatural success. You start seeing it, what they say, hindsight is 20 vision. Yeah. You start seeing it after the fact. You start saying, wow, now how did I know to turn there? Wow, how did I know to call that person? Come on. How did I, how did that, you just start seeing the effects and you start know. You, you start asking yourself, what's different about me? And you go, wow, I've been praying in the spirit. That's what I'm seeing going on. So, so, some really supernatural stuff is going on. And then letter C says, you can't be, uh oh, you can't be filled with the spirit. Translation, feed your spirit. And be filled with other spirits or feed your flesh. It's not going to work. Now, now, this is a very important point right here. This is a very important point. If you get filled with the Spirit, you have, you have this great potential to be empowered. And when you're empowered, you have this great potential for, for, for powerful things to happen uh, through you and around you. All right? But... Just like any kind of empowerment, and I, I guess I'll use the example of a of a uh, of a grill, a barbecue grill. You got this fire going. You know, you have these coals, and you are the coals, and you know you're trying to heat up. And seem like you can heat up. All of a sudden, you put that 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 fluid on it, that oil on it, and that's like the Holy Spirit. And you got a, this thing is ablaze. Now you got a real powerful fire. This thing's really burning good. But how many of you know that fire can be smoldered? How many of you know? It's kind of like when you're cooking and the things out of control fire, and you say, I don't want this to be too, too loud because it, it might burn up my steaks. You know, let me let me kind of calm it down a little bit. You can you can put the lid on it, you can put water on it. And what I'm saying is any fire can be dampened, it can be smoldered. And that's what happens with the fire of the Holy Spirit. When you, when you throw other things on it. You know, you throw drugs on it. You throw alcohol on it. You throw unforgiveness on it. You know, seriously. You, you, put, you put the wrong spirit on that spirit. You put jealousy on it. And it's like taking some water and all this great fire that you had burning, oh, it's just burning and getting ready to make you the best meal that you could ever want. But all of a sudden you're just pouring this thing on and it's just damning it before you know if the thing is going out. So you can't be filled with it. Now, you say, Pastor, why do you say that? I say that because it says it in, in fact, let's look at it. In Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, it gives you a good example of it. It says it. Ephesians chapter 5. And let's see, verse number, uh, what am I looking for? Verse number, yes sir, verse number 18. It says, and be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, or literally, where, if you, if you read that with a Greek mind or Greek translation, it, it basically says what I just said. Be not drunk with wine, where there is dissipation, or where there is a smoldering or a, 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 a breaking down of that which you already have. So it says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. In other words, where it begins to disempower you, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, the original translation there would read like this, but be continually filled with the Spirit. So that, what that means is be refilled daily. You know, cell phone. You the cell phone. Keep plugging yourself up daily. Keep plugging yourself up daily because you know you're working hard. Do you realize? I, I, I wonder if some of us really realize. Now, I guess this is just the way that God speaks to me. You can work hard physically. And I've done both. You know, especially since I've been at this church. <laughs> since I've been at this church, I've had some days where I came home and I felt like I was a... Uh, working for the union. You know, I'm serious. I was like, where's my triple scale? I, I don't like hanging out with Brother Clifton and Brother Tyrone because I come home real tired. They, they be working hard, sweeping floors and hanging stuff up. 